Greetings. You have your ticket? You don't have one? No problem, my friend. Just hit the subscription button below. Come on in. Hey guys, DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey, um, I just wanted to uh, take a moment. This is more of a little rant, but also something to challenge you on in terms of are you spending time in reflection? Now, this is a post that, that, that I read earlier today from Facebook. Okay, yeah, whatever. But from Facebook, this is what it says. How sad it must be believing that scientists, scholars, historians, economists, journalists have devoted their entire lives to deceiving you while a reality TV star with decades of fraud and exhaustively documented lying is your only beacon of truth and honesty. See if you can see that. Yeah, yeah you can see that. There you go. Right? Now, here's my thoughts about that. Okay. I'm assuming they're talking about Donald Trump when they're talking about the reality star. Uh, that's, that's a liar and that's deceiving and dishonest. Um, I think we all will agree no, there's no disputing that. But here's the part that I want to dispute. The comparing journalists, historians, economic, economists, journalists, uh, and scholars, you know, as as the um, the the uh, how you say the um, I can't think of the right word. So the opposite. Okay. So so if you're looking for the counter argument, they're saying that Donald Trump is the dishonest, crook, liar, deceiver, but your scholars, historians, scientists, etc., are not. Hmm. That's a very interesting thought, my friend. Uh, first of all, let me let me tell you something about historians, okay? See this book right here? See that? This is the history of the United States, prepared especially for schools on a new and comprehensive plan embracing the features of Lehman, what is that, historical chart, okay? Now, this book um, was printed in the year of, I want to say, 18... 76. So if you can see this, let's see. Can you see that? Right, my thumb. It's copyrighted. Let's see if I can figure out how to get that to you. Copyrighted. Eight above my finger. I'm sorry. 1876. You see that? So this would have been a historic, a historic, a book on history that your scholars and your educators would have been teaching you from. Now, how many of you guys have heard the story of the natives? I mean, I'm sorry that that all blacks were from Africa or the slaves were from Africa. We've all heard that story more times. We were taught that bullshit at school. All of us. Doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. If you were educated in America and probably the West as a whole, you were probably taught very similar history to this. Well, let me read something to you from this very book, okay? All right. A matter of fact... I want you to read it for yourself. You see over there where that number five is, where I have the star right above my, where I'm turning up to? I want you to read what that says. It says, and the next important voyage was, let's see, get that a little closer there, was the year of 1820, right? A judge in St. Domingo, right? Let's see here. On the expedition, he, all right. He and six other wealthy men eager to stock their plantation with slaves determined to do so by kidnapping natives from the Bahamas. The two vessels were filled and set for the purpose and the, I guess the, the Analon commanded in person, right? And then it goes on to say, right, when, let's get up here, when the ships when the ships were nearing their destination, they encountered a storm. I'm sorry, I skipped down. You see, they were eager stocking their plantations with slaves, determined to do so by kidnapping the natives from the Bahamas. Now, I just want you to just think about it. Then the two vessels were fit for the purpose, and the analog commanded. And when the ships were filled, all right, when the ships were filled nearing their destination, they encountered a storm, and then they drew the long and the short of it is that what it's saying is that when the ship was nearing their destination, they encountered a storm, which drove them north and brought them to the coast of South Carolina. 
And then it goes on to tell you. So now you just saw in your history book, this is something that we're teaching in 1876 from these scholars, from these educators, right? Saying that the natives in the Bahamas, natives, not Africans in Bahamas, natives in Bahamas, those natives were kidnapped so that they could be put on plantations in America as slaves. Now, how many guys have gone to the Bahamas? I think a few of you have. The Bahamas is about 180 miles from uh, Miami, Florida, give or take. So if you know where the Bahamas is and you've been to the Bahamas, you will know that most of the people are the natives of, Baham of the Bahamas are copper color people that look very similar to me. Now, you know, so when you think in terms of why would in 1876 they call them natives, you know what I'm saying, who were brought and put on plantations as slaves, but now all of a sudden, in 1950, they were Africans who came from Africa that were brought to America and put on plantations as slaves in the Carolinas. So you start talking about, you know, the Donald Trumps of the world and the lie and the deception. Then I'm going to tell you, either get your, either think holistically or, or just be what you are and don't think at all. Maybe even better, just keep your mouth shut. Now, let me go a little bit farther. So we're talking about who's fake and who's deceiving. How many of you guys remember um, Iran, Iraq having weapons of mass destruction? How many of you guys remember that story? Every congressman in Congress, with the exception of one, said and signed off on that Iraqi war. Talking about the one where Saddam Hussein was taken, sank, Saddam Hussein was taken out. We were all told that, 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 that America, the government, all right? The smart people, right? These people who are so honest and so pure, like the, the you know, like the king, you know, um, blogger here in Facebook. They were so honest that they all told us this big, fat, juicy lie. They even had Colin Powell involved in it. Remember Colin Powell? The general, you know, Amtrex, remember that? Proved they had no question about it. 100% sure. And what about all the other lies we've been taught through history? How about the one that Columbus discovered America? Now, unless you don't know any damn thing about history, most of you, I'm going to give you a benefit of the doubt and say you do. Columbus never made it to America. Columbus went as far as Puerto Rico. And that's as far as he went. So the man never saw America. But how many of you guys have been taught that Columbus discovered America? So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is that you need to go back and do your own historical research. Yes, Donald Trump, in my opinion, flip-flops more than a fresh fish out of the ocean. But if you think that Donald Trump is the only liar out here and that your journalists don't lie to you, your journalists are reading from scripts. They're literally reading from scripts. Your journalists, the people you watch on television, your writers. Because guess what? The Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post supported the war on Iraq and said that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. So I think they're journalists, right? The people, your, your commentators, right? I, I think they will fall in the class in, in the category of journalists. Obviously, your teachers. Go find a teacher and ask that teacher to start teaching the true history of the United States of America. Know what that teacher's going to tell you? She can't because if they taught the truth, they would get fired. They're given an agenda by the Board of Education, and that's what they're allowed to teach and nothing more. So when you start talking about deception and truths and untruths, that's enough lies to go around. And I refuse to allow you and myself to narrow this thing down to what they say a low gravy and just say that Donald Trump is the only one out here deceiving people. Bullshit. That deception goes here and far. And it goes into the sciences. If your sciences are so, so knowledgeable, why is every science book, go take a look at a science book and see how many revisions are in the damn science book. Just go take a look at it. Making shit up. And they won't lie. Well, go ask the people who were involved in the uh, Tuskegee uh, experiment. This is when they gave those men syphilis, right? And told them that they were giving them some type of uh, medicine uh, because they had bad blood. Go check it out. Go find out. Lie after lie after lie after lie. So, you know, you know, 
I don't apologize for telling you, you know, what I'm saying to you. Because my intention is to get you to get off your ass and go find out some history for yourself. Go find out who, who was here. Who, who, were the, who were the first nation here on this continent? The information is there. I'll just show you some information that I got out of this book. I mean, there's enough stuff in this, in this particular history book right here, I'm telling you, to open up your eyes. And this is just one. If I could turn this, 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 this computer around, you know, let me do this for you guys. Let me do this, okay? Bear with me. I got you. I wonder if it'll work. We'll see. Let's see here. Can you see that? Let's see. Can you see that? You see that? What is that? All right. Can you see that up there? Okay. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to tell you. I want to. <laughs> I want to show you. If you want to be a dumbass, you can be a dumbass. But if you want to know history, if you want to know the truth, then you got to be willing to put some work in. All right. You got to be willing to pick up a book. How about that one? Huh? You got to be willing to try to find out some information. How about this one? The book of Enoch. That's supposed to be in your Bible, believe it or not. Let's see. Where do we want to start? Want to go any farther? Oh, one of my favorites. How about this one? Where are we are? Hmm. Yes. Oh, and how about this one? Yeah, you, that, that is exactly what you think you're looking at. Yes, that is a man hanging from a tree. The name of this book is called Without Sanctuary, right? See right here? Without Sanctuary. Can you see that? See that? And I see the name in there. And what is this book about? This book is full of pictures. Give you one more picture to see. Teaching you about American history that you didn't learn in the public schools. So when you start talking about lying, okay, and who's telling lies, guys, there's enough lies to go around. You know, there's a scripture that says you should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, you know what? What it simply means is that without the truth, your mind is, is, is locked up, and it's almost as though it's in a dark, deep pit. You know, cave with no sunlight, you follow me, where no life can exist. That's what happens to your mind when you allow yourself to look to others to inform you, to educate you. I'm talking about, you know, your, your, your national information, your politicians, your government system, individuals, I guess is the way I should say it. And if you're going to know something, you got to be willing to get off your ass and learn something. But going out here and blaming all this stuff on Donald Trump, like Donald Trump is the beginning and end of all things, is that's for the simple mind, that's for the child, that's for the little children. The only person that's responsible for your knowledge is you. And sitting here, you know, trying to put it all on Trump, to all the problems of the world is President Trump. Bullshit. I'm going to tell you the problems of the world. The problem of the world is every idiot who refused to pick up a book who refuse to go to a library, who refuse to do any kind of research, you're the problem. Matter of fact, I'll go as far as I tell you, the problem with bigotry and racism in this country is because of you. Because you're too damn lazy and you're just willing, you're just sitting on the sideline, armchair quarterback, and blaming other people because of, you know, your lack of dedication, your lack of commitment to know something. To learn and know the truth and find out the truth for yourself. And then realize that when you find out that truth, that truth will set you free. And what does that free mean? It will cause you to be able to think independently, be able to come up with wisdom and ideas, su su suggestions, solutions. All right? To make this world a better place while we have so little time left to do it. That clock is ticking, guys. And for you guys who are 50 and older... You better get off of your ass. If 40 and older, you don't have any more time either. And the young people, yeah, I will tell you this. You better get up and you better go find out the truth for yourself. If not, you're going to fall in the same trap as your elders are in. Lost in no direction, self in self-deceiving and self-destruction. Thank you for listening.